Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. Willie Sims CPA is a full service firm offering small business accounting, bookkeeping, payroll, tax preparation, and more. Our dependable and experienced staff has developed a reputation for professional excellence. Service at its best, service you can depend on. Hannah is available for ministry and speaking engagements for conferences, revivals, and other church events. She is also available for graduation ceremonies and Black History Month events. Email hannahopkins at aol.com or call 601-296-7693. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us today on Lifting You Higher TV Ministries. Every Sunday I'm excited and I'm excited today because I have with me a very special guest. This is a woman who really loves God. I've seen her come and I've seen her go, but every time I've seen her, there is such an anointing over her life until when you're in her presence, you can feel the presence of the Lord. And so she is none other than evangelist Tracy Morgan, and she serves as chaplain for the Forest County Jail. She's also an intercessor. She has intercessory prayer. She has a prayer line. So God is just using her in different areas. But most of all, she has a testimony that God has given her of things that he delivered her out of through prayer. And I had that scripture here and I'm going to try to find it so that I can read it to you. I mean, I know it, but I'll read it. It said, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So she's going to testify today because somebody needs to help hear what you have to say. I've talked enough. Let me shake your hand. Thank you for joining me. God bless you. God bless you. Now, I want you to tell the audience how long you've been in the ministry. What how long have you been in First, the First, I want to thank you for this opportunity oh, you are so to share welcome. your podium with me and be yeah. able to come here just to testify yes. about the goodness of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been in, I have been um, licensed for just about five years, but I've been in ministry for over 10 years. Wow. Um, just doing what God called me to do. And, yeah. Um, the anointing that God has put on me to be an evangelist, to reach out to the lost people. And because of the testimony that I have, the things that I've been through, I have a passion for people, I have a passion for the lost because I was lost. I have a passion for mm. those that are bound because I was bound. Praise and God. I realized through my testimony, everything that I've been through, how even as a young girl was looking for love in the wrong places. And mm. I had my first child at 15 and I died on the table when I had my child. And I woke up the next day and my mother said, you know, we lost you. And I said, yes, I didn't. I never, of course, didn't think I was coming back because I know I was in a place and it wasn't heaven and it wasn't hell. And I thank God that he spared me. And at that time, God was calling me then, but I didn't know nothing about Christianity. I just knew it was something great on the inside of me that I had to tap into. So I began to seek God as the years went down the line. Um, I died um, having that baby. Then I went through an accident. I fell asleep in the car and woke up in the car, was flipping and and just a lot of testimony, just a lot of trials. And and I'm I feel like Paul when he said, I'm persuaded, I'm convinced, mm. you know, because of everything that I've been through. Uh, I realized that uh, no weapon that's formed against me will prosper. No, I, I realized no. that whatever the devil bring my way, that God allow it to come my way mm. and that I'm equipped to go through what I've been through. Um, I recovering. I've been on drugs as a young girl, alcohol, just out there looking for love and um, had cancer in my body. And the doctor, me and two of my sisters had cancer at the same time we were diagnosed with cancer. What but, kind of cancer did you um, have? Overcancer. But guess what God did? He took the cancer out of my body without any doctors touching me. But my two sisters deceased. And I began to question God. I said, why did you keep me here? We all had the street life. We all lived, you know, the worldly way. But God 
He saw fit to keep me here that he know I would tell people about his goodness. He would, t- he know that I would tell people that he is a healer, that he is Praise a deliverer, that he Praise is a God. provider. And I know without a shadow of doubt, nobody can tell me that he's not real. He has purpose for your life. He has purpose for my and life. And he left you here because he knew you would obey him. Yes, he did. Let me ask you another question. Are you from Louisiana? I'm from New York City. New York City because you have an accent. Yes. I like too. New York City, that's yeah. a story itself too. Um, after 9-11, me and my husband worked right there. Um, the Twin Towers, we were right there. We seen everything. Um, we York. witnessed everything. We had to run for our life. Um, so I, I was there on the scene running for my life. I dreamed it first. I dreamed, but I didn't know it was going to be Twin Towers. I just know it was going to be a fire and planes were going to be crashing. And I was going to be there. And I told my church before it happened. So I have a lot of testimonies and I'm grateful to God that he kept me and he continues to keep me. And I know that whatever he bring my way, I'm triumph. I'm going to overcome whatever he bring my way. I'm convinced that what, um, maybe a few years, a few months ago, I had a bad headache and I went to the hospital and I went to the hospital and they looked at me and they say, are you okay? I said, yes. They say, your blood pressure is 265 over 130. They say, you're not supposed to be living right now. You're supposed to be had a stroke. You're supposed to be in a coma right now. But I know it's his goodness. 265. 265 over 130. High blood pressure. What, did they give you something to bring it down? They gave me something. And when they did give me medication to bring it down, uh, my body went into shock. It went too low. So I know the devil don't like me, but I don't like him either. <laughs> so <laughs> but you, you have the victory. Though. I have the victory. I, uh-huh. and, and you know when people try to tell me God don't heal, God don't. You can't tell me that because I'm already convinced because I know what He done for me. Right. And right. I know what He done for me is for me to tell other people. That's he right. knew that I would share it and tell them that God can heal you, God can deliver you, God can provide he for can you. Do God can. He can do anything. He's God. Wow. He's God. Wow. So. <clears throat> When you were young and all of these things happened, you got to know Jesus. But how old were you when you committed your life to the to the Lord? Well, I was 20 something. Even mm-hmm. after dying on the table, I still didn't I didn't understand what was going on in my life. I so didn't the, the doctors revived you. Yes. Yes. Wonder how long did you stay out? Uh, you know, I questioned that. I said I never asked my mother <laughs> mm-hmm. how long how long did this take place? But mm-hmm. when, when I was in a cloud, I was sitting mm-hmm. up in a cloud and it was a big cross across from me. I never went to heaven and I didn't go to hell, but I will never forget that cross. And I believe the Lord was calling me at that time, but because I didn't have no understanding of Christianity and I wasn't raised up in the church. But as I got older, I began to seek this God that spared my life, this God that saved me, this God that brought me out of and didn't let me die. And I began to seek him. And I, as I began to seek him, he began to tell me there's purpose. Yeah, there's purpose, purpose for your life. That's why yeah. the devil couldn't kill me because yeah. of the purpose. Yeah. And every day I wake up, it's purpose that's pulling me right. and purpose that's calling me. Right. So that's why I'm here today. So would you tell the audience then that if God has purpose for your life, the enemy can't destroy you, he can't defeat you okay. because you're going to be here to pu- fulfill your purpose? Yes, ma'am. I want to tell somebody today that's watching. You might be going through something right now and not understand why you're going through that. It's called purpose. That's the very reason you woke up today. Purpose. That's why you can't give up because of the purpose. That's why even when you mess up, you get back up. The Bible said just man for it, but he get back up. I want you to know that no weapon that's formed against you will be able to prosper. If you stay in Christ Jesus, there's a destiny that's calling you and there's a purpose that you have to read. So know that God is able to do whatever it is you need him to do. He could heal you. He could deliver. He could provide for you. He could make a way out of nowhere. He will cover you. He will send his angels to keep you safe from all harm and danger. Know that God is God. Use your testimony. The Bible said we're overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. Your testimony is a test of what you've been through and God want to use that, that you will tell somebody else that they will know that God is real. God God. is an awesome God. He is a mighty God and we got to trust God in these lasting evil days and know that he can and he will and it's up to you to trust him. God bless you. Praise God. That was a prophetic word for someone. Yes. Someone needed to hear that word. Yes. Uh, Sister Tracy, there is a scripture that's found in Mark 11, 24 through 25 or 26 says, um, have faith, faith in God. God. Mm-hmm. He said, you speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed and cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say shall come to, shall pass, come to pass and you shall have whatsoever, whatsoever you, you say. say. Yes, ma'am. Now, let's talk about that. 
Yes. Well, that's one of my favorite scriptures. That's one of the scriptures I stand on because he began in verse 22. It says, when you pray, have faith. And because I'm a prayer warrior, I'm an intercessor. And I had to pray and believe God to do some impossible things in my life. My marriage, I had to believe God to restore my marriage. I had to believe God when I didn't know where I was going to stay to provide a roof over my head. I had to believe God when me and my husband both were laid off to, to provide food, clothing and shelter for us. He said, have faith and believe that what you're praying for is already already done. Yes. So we got to know that we serve a God that is living. Our God is not there. He's the yes. truly, he's the God of the universe. Yes. And whatever it is that we need, we got to have faith to believe that he could do it. He said, we could speak to the mountains. Yes. Sometimes we depend on and we wait on God to come back to do stuff that he gave us the power to do. Yes. He yes. said, I give you power. I give you dominion. So you speak to your mountains. We're able to speak to those mountains of those things that seem big and they seem impossible and it seems like we can't go over them, but God gave it authority to speak to the mountains. Yes, he does. So I thank him for that. So I, when we speak to the mountain and we tell it to be removed and mm -hmm, cast into the sea, mm -hmm. then that's the power and authority God has invested in us. If we have faith, if we, we have, have faith to, to believe that. it, yes. You know, this is getting good and we got to take a break, but yes. you all stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hannah is available for ministry and speaking engagements for conferences, revivals, and other church events. She is also available for graduation ceremonies and Black History Month events. Email hannahopkins at aol.com or call 601-296-7693. You can also become a partner or sponsor of the show. Make your donation by logging on to hannahopkins at aol.com or sending your donation to P.O. Box 17405, Hattiesburg, Mississippi 39404. Down, 
It's running after, it's running after me And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. I'm gonna sing of the goodness of my God. I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. If you're joining us for the second part of the program today, I have as my special guest, evangelist Tracy Morgan. And this, this young lady is an intercessor. She's a prayer warrior. Uh, she serves as chaplain for, for the jailhouse of Forest County in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. God is just using her. And she tells us today that she's been through all of these things, but God left you here because he had a what? Purpose. A purpose, purpose. for your life. Yes, ma'am. So when we are purpose driven, we go through a lot sometimes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What did the word say? Many are the afflictions of, of the, the righteous, righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. 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 That's so right. he was there the whole time. That's right. And you know, he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never, never forsake, forsake you. you. I'll never let you walk ahead while I stay behind you. But Never. I'll go before you to prepare a way for you yes, so you he can will. make it. You know, I think about Isaiah 53rd chapter, verse 10, where it said, it pleased the father to crush Jesus. It pleased him. So what make us think we're exempt? What make us think we're not going to go? He said, if you want to reign with me, you must, you're going to have to suffer, suffer with, with me. me. Nobody don't want to suffer. Nobody want to go through the process, but everybody wants the promise. But we have to mm -hmm. go through that process so mm -hmm. we could be made like Christ. Yes. So when we're going through these things, God is taking us and getting rid of us. Right. We are dying daily. In so Christ. that he can live on the yes. inside of us. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Now, I'm, I'm going to be ministering pretty soon on prayer. And, and to me, Prayer is the foundation yes, it is. for anything. A lot of us want to go out to minister, but we don't want to spend any time in prayer. Wait. Let's talk about prayer. How, is, how important is prayer? Prayer is very vital. Prayer is important. Um, prayer, without me having a prayer life, I wouldn't, I would have been set in a lot of traps that I went through. I would have been caught in them. But mm -hmm. because I have a prayer life, God prepared me before a lot of things happened. Like 9-11, it was a dream. He told me about it before it happened. The tornado that came in 2017 that hit my house, he told me that day the tornado was going to hit my house through a dream. So the, through having a prayer life, I'm able to be in tune with the spirit. And he said, when you pray, Believe that what you're praying for is already done. So a lot of things that we want and got to do, all we have to do is go to, because he's the father and we are his children. He's our father. And so when we, prayer is communicating. It's just talking to God. Like you and I sitting here we're talking right now. It's com we're communicating and we communicate with the father like that. But a lot of people don't like to pray. They don't realize that's why a lot of things is going on right now in the city and everywhere else in the world, because we won't come together in prayer. Today is the uh, national day of prayer where people around the world are praying. praying. So when we come together and when we praying, we got to realize that we need to see results. We expecting God to do something because we're praying to the Father. And the Bible said, ask, it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock and the door shall open. Ask is praying. It's talking to God and knowing that God will do what he has. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. This mm -hmm. is his word. Mm -hmm. And we stand on his word as right. believers and mm -hmm. we trust his word. Well, you know, a lot of times we want to do the work, but we don't want to pray to prepare ourselves. Mm -hmm. Jesus used to get up. I remember one time in the Bible, he got up at like three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. went out into the mountain, prayed to his father for four hours, mm -hmm. came back, told his disciples, guys, come on, let's go into the city. Yes. And when people would say, God, heal me. I have leopard. He'd say, be healed. Be healed. I'm blind. See, be healed. It took a fraction of a second yes. for him to do the work because he had spent four hours with the father. With the father praying. Praying. Praying without ceasing. Without ceasing. So yes. what does that tell us? If we want the power and the anointing, yes. we have to pray. Yes. And he did. He said, I want you to wait. I'm going to send you back the power. The same thing he did. He said we could do that and greater. So if he prayed and the dead came back alive, if he prayed and blind eyes open, why are we not seeing that today? 
Why don't we see those? And we're praying. Because we're praying with divisions. We're not praying coming together. We what did he tell his disciples in the 17th chapter of John? He said he wanted them to come together and be as one, even as he and his father, father are one. one. Yes. There's power in unity when yes, you pray. Is. Yes, it is. What happened on the day of Pentecost? They came together on one accord. One accord. And when they came together on one accord, great things happened. And that's what's going to happen when we come together and we make up our minds that we're going to pray together. We're going to see something suddenly. And suddenly the things we've been praying about is going to happen. And suddenly those people we've been praying to be healed are going to get healed. And suddenly our family members are going to get saved. And suddenly people are going to be the, the gang banging and the stuff that's going on in the cities now. When we get in these streets and start praying and suddenly we're going to see change. When we come together, when we come together, what would unity. happen if everybody in Hattiesburg had a day of prayer? Oh, wow. I couldn't even imagine. And we all prayed for the same thing. I couldn't imagine. No division. No divisions. No competition. Yes. Just seeking him. Yes. Think about how God could move. I could imagine. I could see it. We could see. We could see it in the spirit because he said it. If he said it, I believe it. That's why I pray like I pray. I get up 4.30 in the morning. Uh, I go before, before I go to work, I have to pray. While I'm at work, I pray. Uh, I, I'm, a pr I'm a prayer warrior. And you know, prayer I have spared my life. Um, with that headache, I said, it's just a headache. And the Holy Spirit said, no, go to the hospital. So when I went to the hospital, my blood pressure was up 265 over 130. That's from having a prayer life that God will speak God to, you. to you. He will speak to you. He will show you things that's going to happen before it even happens. So that you can pray about them and counteract that So that, that you can thing. pray about it because he already gave you the power and authority. When you do pray, things do change. When you touch, he said, any two touch and agree on anything on earth, whatever we pray for shall be done. And I believe that. I'm crazy enough to believe that. That's I why believe I believe when the doctor said, said you have it. cancer, I said, okay. I got scared at first, but I went home and I prayed. I, I fasted and I prayed and um, God did and that. And so what happened after then? Well, I went home. Um, my children came here. I didn't tell nobody but my mother How at that time. How long has that been? That's been before I moved, 12, 12 years or more. Uh -huh. um, I called my mother and I said, I need one person to touch and agree with me. I said, the doctor say I have cancer 99 points percentage. And she started screaming. I said, OK, I don't need you to pray with me then. Because I need somebody. That, he said, two people come together touch and pray and agree. about anything on this earth that he would do it. And that's just what I believe. And see, sometimes that's why a lot of the things that we go through, God could trust us. He know I was going to pray about that. He know that he was going to get the glory out of that. A lot of things that I've been through, God knew he was going to get the glory right, out of it. Right, right. So we got to, we got so to continue to pray. And so you went home and you, and you and prayed. And I, I continued to pray. And I, continue, I, put, I got on a fast, of course, fast and pray. And um, they said they wanted to see me in a week, and I asked them two weeks. Because I had been praying, you asking a father. Uh -huh. And uh, my children was away, and I, shut, I, I was in a um, room by myself alone, shut up and fasted and praying and worship. And... I trusted God and God did it. So when you went back, what did the doctor no say? No cancer. Two, three doctors coming to look, but no cancer. And I said, oh, it got worse. And the Holy Spirit said, no, it didn't. Because you, they bring it. What it was, they was confused about what God did. God is a miracle God. He's a God that he's still performing miracles. And they didn't understand. No, they didn't understand. But I bet you they know it was real because they know what the x-ray said. They, they know what it said, but they know what they seen afterwards. So God will wow. even... He even let the doctors know that I am real. Wow. He, he astounded the minds of the doctors. Yes, he, yes, he did. He, he did. There's so many things that I've been through where if I didn't have that prayer closet, that relationship with God to pray, I wouldn't know how to deal with a lot of things. I wouldn't know which way to go. Instead of running to people, I always run to him. He and gives it, you directions. He do. And even situations that I've been through, people would look at me like, is she okay? God equipped me for what I've been through and what I'm going to go through for the future. He anointed me and he equipped me to be able to go through that. It will not tear me down. It will not destroy me. It's it won't not, defeat it's, you? It won't defeat me. It just pushes me to that purpose. Wow. Every day I get up. Wow. Wow. So prayer is powerful. It is powerful. When we pray, we got to believe. Listen, we have about five minutes left in the mm -hmm. show. This is what I want us to do. I want you and I want the two of us to pray mm -hmm. for people who are not saved today. Okay. Then I want us to pray for people who have needs today. Okay. And if we have some uh, time left, we're going to have some more music at the end of the show. Okay. Okay. So can we pray for the unsaved yes, right now? 
Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you right now. It might be somebody watching right now on TV, God, somebody that don't know you and the pardon of their sins, oh God, but you died so that we could be saved, oh God, yes, and we asking you to save today, God. Save God, God, we believe, oh God, that you died for that very Thank reason Jesus. so that we could live, oh God. Thank we you, asking, oh God, that those in our family that's not saved, those that are bound, that you will lose them, oh God, that they the will come to Jesus. know you and the pardon of their sins, oh God. The Bible says, is there anything too hard, Father God, no matter what you're dealing with today, no matter what's going on in your life. You just heard my testimony, how God moved cancer out of my body. God could save you. He could heal you today. You have to trust Thank in God. God. Turn from what you're going through Thank right now, God. God. Turn to Jesus and know that God can do it. He is a healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Jireh. And you got to know He is God. No matter where you at, no matter what you're going through, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows about the test that you're going through. He knows about that sickness. This is your season. This is your time. It's Thank up to you, you to have faith to believe that God could do it for you. Thank we you, trust God. you, God, that even as me and Minister Hopkins is touching and agreeing right now, that those that are watching, that somebody is going to testify and say that that lady prayed and Thank she prayed you, for my healing and I was Thank healed. You, that lady prayed and I got saved because somebody you, told God. me their testimony because I told you how Thank I was you, on God. drugs. I told you mm. how I had cancer in my body. I told you how I used to drink alcohol, but God turned it around. He said me Thank for a time God. such as this just to be here today Thank on this God. platform to tell you that God can and he will and we say if you trust him he will make a way out of no way thank God you bless God. you and we thank you God for saving them souls in Jesus name Jesus amen. amen 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 oh I felt the anointing in here we have thank three you. minutes left <clears throat> and we have some beautiful music by sister Tammy Ducksworth from the Tabernacle of Prayer Church in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. She's going to come on and she's going to close us out with some beautiful music. We hope you were blessed today. I may as well go ahead and close my part out. I was blessed. I was I was, I was just inspired by what you said, by your testimony. Thank you for having me. I think I got Thank to live it today by your testimony. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> God bless you. And until this time next week, I'm Hannah Hopkins with Lifting You Higher TV Ministries saying, you be blessed. Make me real, Lord, make me real, make me real while I'm on this battlefield, stamp your love down in my heart, never more shall to be thy servant just to do thine holy will if you teach me to be thy servant I'm gonna stay on the battlefield teach my heart to walk up right teach me holy day and night Lord you make me real Listen, I don't want to be a hypocrite Pretending I'm on my way Standing in the way of sinners